Um, Sean, first and foremost, what did you make of that? Um, certainly by half time, when um, you know, horrible games of manager when you're doing everything you asked as a team, um, and you concede such a, a, a well, a good goal from their point of view, of course, on the break, you know, they're capable of that, but a pretty soft goal from our point of view, we're in possession at their end of the pitch, a soft pass, and they counter, and you, you're 1 0 down against the run of play. Um, certainly, I thought the, the way we performed in the first half was at least decent and, and as good as I was at hoping for. Affect them in so many different ways, but as we know, one of the biggest challenges there is them finding them clinical moments, which we didn't do. And then start of the second half, I thought it was very similar. Um, a big, big decision on the penalty. I mean, I can't really work it out. We go to these meetings, we've just literally been told that the, the bar's going to be incredibly high now for the referee to make a decision. He makes a clear decision. He's a perfect viewing point. And lo and behold, he's called over to overturn the decision. And you're like, well, what's the point of having a high bar then? Because when you look back at it, they've said he's Dom's foot lands or apparently one of the official lines has been Dom's foot lands on their players. Well, for one, he doesn't obviously want to put his foot on their players, and their player's out of control on the floor and drags his foot along with the bottom of his, with the top of his foot and the bottom of Dom's. So that clearly pulls him to the ground. And I'm like, well, what is a pen then? Because that, that's contact in the box and a pen. And we've all seen the tiniest, you know, someone tread on your toe and they give up an away. So I'm like, I think we're all confused by it. There's no reason for confusion. If he lets the referee give that, the referee gives it. I don't think there's too many complaints. How disappointed, though, were you with how things unfolded after that decision went against the players? Well, yeah, I mean, you concede from a, a poor decision from a pass, obviously. Um, it's very disappointing. And then you get someone sent off. So by then, it's, it's very difficult. The whole feeling of everything changes. You know, it's quite apparent. Um, and it's a difficult thing then, you know. But, I mean, it's <laughs> unfortunately, I had these moments early last season, head scratches where you go, well, first half's a very good performance in so many ways, statistically, on the eyes, apart from them clinical moments. And they're so important. And we got punished for mistakes until our own um, mistake for the sending off. You know, Youngy knows he should head that and not bring it down. Um, yeah, so we got punished. It's simple as that. Um, so you come away feeling flat and disappointed in a, in a performance at half time. You go, yeah, actually, that's what I wanted to see. Them, them turning points are massive. Them decisions are so. We've spoken about endlessly. The, the, the details in the Premier League are far more important than any other division. Um, you spoke about in the first half, right, and perhaps being a little bit more clinical when they went further forward. Was there any dilemma in your head when you were setting up the team today? Brighton being more clinical, sorry. Brighton, yeah, um, in those big moments in the first half. Was there well, they only had one, I thought, so, yeah. yeah. Was there any dilemma in your head when you were setting up the Everton side just about how to try and find a bit more clinicism in, in your own ranks? Well, you've got Illman and I, yes, on the bench. Well, the clinical moment in football is the most important moment, and usually, in my experience, developing that is the hardest thing. We spoke about that before. If it was that easy, every manager in the country will be developing players who are clinical. Or they'd be very cheap, which we know they're not. We're certainly not in depth of riches. We know that. Um, and the idea of developing that clinical moment is very difficult. We found it in spells since I've been here. And we found it other spells tough. And I thought the first half was a, a tough moment when we couldn't find that killer moment, killer pass. We had several really good opportunities when we pressed them or broke their play or played in behind them with real good quality. Um, you know, and, and that's something we've, we've got to continually work to be more effective at, quite obviously. Have you had any thoughts towards next week? Obviously, Ashley Young's now going to be suspended. Is there any potential for Colburn or Patton or even Garner nope. to be back fit? In highly unlikely they'll be fit. Any of those three? All, all three of them? No. They won't be fit. Thank you. Who's next, actually? Hi, Sean. Um, just 40 goals scored last season and only one on one shot on target today. Is that a concern going forward? No, it's not a concern, of course. Um, it's fair to say that there's a reality to that. And the reality is, you know, the, the hardest thing to affect is goal scoring. Everyone knows that. That's why goal scorers are so expensive. That's why they're in demand. Um, not just goal scorers, but wide players, clinical players. They're very hard to come by. So we've in, been in a situation this summer. We think we've brought some in who can be more effective. They can learn about the Premier League, particularly in Illy and uh, Jasper. Um, but they haven't experienced the Premier League. So it's my job to give them a chance when they are ready to actually go and perform. And at this moment, I still think there's a bit of work to be done and a bit of awareness for them to understand about the Premier League. Once uh, the ones that you mentioned, Illiman and Jesper, get up to speed, are they the type of players you're looking for for the service for Dominic? It's not just about service. We're looking for players to be productive themselves. You know, it's um, you know, it's not just about one player. But since I've been here, it always seems to be Dom. But you know, there's there's lots of other players on a football pitch. You want all players to have that clinical edge. We've got in so many good positions. Our wide players getting in good positions today. Can you find that pass? Can you find that that finish? Uh, midfield joining in when possible. 
Um, you know, set pieces. I thought we were good again today, and, and you know, an offside stops us having one, and the delivery was good. Um, so no, we want effective players from all over the pitch. You can't just rely on one player. And Tim did well on his first half. Done very well. I thought he's had a really strong pre-season. He's probably the one out the new players. As you know, he has experienced the Premier League. He's been around it. He's experienced it, and also the Championship. And he looks more game ready for what the Premier League is likely to offer. Higher physicality, we know. Higher need to work both ways, you know, not just attacking, but defending, defending, attacking, and find that mixture. I thought he was excellent. I think he's had a really strong pre season. I was really pleased for him because it looks like he's a, he's a young player who's really enjoying playing. <coughs> Sean, have you spoke to Simon who provoked the incident because there's some reports? There, there is no point, unfortunately, because. The, the, the way that it's changed is we go, like I say, we go to these meetings, you give feedback and it more or less stays the same. And today was a good example of that. You know, they, they said their words, not mine, they're going to set the bar really, really high and we're going to let the referees referee, which apparently all, all stakeholders, as they call them, all agreed to. I, I don't know who they are because they never actually name them, but apparently they do. And I think we all kind of agree somewhat. You know, I, today's one for me, leave it alone. You know, he's got caught, whatever way you look at it, He's got caught on his foot, in the box. He's brought him down. The player's out of control. All managers will tell you, defenders, last ditch, don't go, don't go on the floor. You know, try and stand up. So when that happens, I think it's a safe decision with the referee, but someone's decided it's not. So I don't understand this high bar thing. And one thing I must say, I think, I hope you'll all agree, what about the nine minutes added on? It's not the referee's fault, by the way. But if someone gets injured in that nine minutes in a game like that, that's clearly got away. I mean, you're looking for a miracle at that stage from coming back from 3-0 down to win 4-3. I find that bizarre, and they, you know, it, it's got to be some uh, adjustment to that. Because I just think even their manager looking, their players coming off, and he's like cramped. But if that turns into hamstring injury, he'll be going, what is the point? Because he couldn't make a change, obviously. So he's going, what's, what's the point? I, I find that incredible in the modern game. You know, one week it's health and safety; they're playing too many games. Next week, let's keep them out there needlessly. No, I don't understand that. Sean, you spoke a bit there about how you kind of ease new players in, particularly those that have come from other leagues. I'm just wondering, is that the reason why potentially Jake O'Brien, for example, didn't start over Michael Keane? Like no, the reason why he didn't start is because Michael Keane's had a very strong pre-season. He's been very unfortunate to get injured at Preston, but he's had a very strong pre-season and he's a very experienced Premier League player. Um, Jake hasn't got that experience, but we think he's a very good player and I think he'll learn quickly. He's come in, he's been very open-minded about you know the, the nuts and bolts, if you like, how quick the game is. He found that in the, the previous performances. Uh, but no, he's a very good player and we think he'll develop into it. And just on the right back situation now, because I think all three first choice kind of senior options are, are, are potentially out now for, for Tottenham. Might you have to look into the under 21s, or do you see options in the, the first team squad that could fill in? I, th I think it's a big ask for the under 21s to dive straight in, um, but we'll see. Um, we're certainly going to have to look at the best available options that we can um, work with. Uh, or certainly for the next week, you never know, obviously, two weeks' time, the cup game in between, but I think it's. it's there's a maybe, but I think it's unlikely that we'll be able to get to the point of risking someone next week because it would be a risk. Is that why Mason Holgate potentially came on later in the game? Yeah, we, I mean, it? look, you know, we, 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 the, the squad is what it is currently. We've been a bit unfortunate. We have added to it. We've tried to find a balance. We've been unfortunate with the injuries we've got. None of them particularly, dra well, well Yousef's is longer, to be fair. None of them have been drastic injuries, but they're all a couple of three weeks. And, you know, that can cost you at this early stage of the season when you've got the games coming and you've just finished pre-season. Questions?